Hey guys, last fan of the night. Last fan of the night. What do we have here, Rick? All right, we have a Hunter Comfort Breeze. Um, this is the 36 inch version, which I actually think I like more, to be honest with you. Um, these are pretty cool. Uh, this was basically, it was kind of like an alternative to the original that they offered in the early 80s. And according to some sources, that a lot of showroom owners did not care for these things, so they thought it was a downgrade from the original. But honestly, by today's standards, it's a really pretty good fan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm never upset to see these. Obviously, Farm and Fleet was a pretty iconic installation for a lot of us Midwesterners uh, having these sometimes. Um, this one's in really nice shape. Uh, it's white. You can see the switch housing's a tad yellow, but that always happens. And honestly, the rest of it's really clean. So, but yeah, that's and this one is reversible, which is also kind of cool. And a lot of them are not. Um, this, it's two speed, but it is reversible, so kind of cool. Is there a uh, model number on this one? Um, probably. Um, it's point set rated at 0.7 amps and it is model 22523 and Robins and Myers Comfort Conditioning Division. No, so, no obvious date on it, but it's probably very early 80s, like 82, 83 maybe. These were the first imported, fully imported fan that Hunter offered, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to the uh, original, which always had some imported parts ever since they switched to the 2.5, so most people don't know that. Mm -hmm. Um... And they were, yeah, they were the first non-original, non-oil bath, non-cast iron fan that Hunter offered. So they were, they became eventually the Studio Series and the Summer Breeze and the Coastal Breeze and all the other Hunter models. Uh, but yeah, this was the first thing they offered. These are a big part of my childhood, both with the um, the white ones in, in Farm and Fleet and the brown ones in uh, had an, an, a neighbor that had a brown 52-inch one. Ironically, I don't think I have either of those, white 52 or brown 52, which are the ones from my childhood. I know I've got some brass 52s, and I know I've got the 36 in myriad finishes, um, but I'm actively looking for brown and white 52s. Um yeah, it's hard to say. I think if I had to pick, I like the 52s better, but it's it's six of one, half dozen of another, because even though the 52s were the childhood version for me, the 36, like, you look at it, and it's just like, oh, that's cool. It's a cool fan. I like the proportions on it. Yeah, it's very definitively vintage-looking. It's very definitively hunter-looking. It's just, yeah, it's just cool across the board. So, um, yeah, let's, let's test it. Okay, so, yeah, it's a two-speed, so here's its factory low, which is really more of a medium. And they did offer these in three-speed briefly, uh, as as evidenced by the antique brass one I've got, which is three-speed and reversible. I think, if I'm not wrong, the um, uh, the uh, uh, 52s are always three-speed. Three, yeah, I think they're all. I think all the 52s are three-speed. I, I, I mean, some of them, some of the early ones might have been two-speed. I'm not sure because they were competing with the original, which right. was two-speed. I, all I know is the majority of 52s were three-speed, and a majority of the 36s were two. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I think it could be variations on either so all right let's see what we got 0.38 amps 33 and a half watts and about a three quarters of a power factor it is a capacitor uh running the second speed so yeah it's a single speed motor yep and it was like a proprietary r and m k55 knockoff type thing right yeah as far as i know nobody else i've seen a similar motor in some other imports like commander um which i guess is a clue that maybe maybe commander was who made these Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple other Taiwanese imports have a similar motor. So it's drawing noticeably less amps than what it was. It was rated at 0.7. What's, so. the, what's the line voltage? Let's just check that. No, nope, so go right on. So uh, 0.49 amps, 60 watts, and a whole power factor. Whole power factor. Whole power factor. I feel it over here, so that's... that's yeah, it'll be interesting to compare this to the 42-inch fans we tested today. Right. Okay, so I'm getting... Nice, clean Do you one. have the calculator? Or um, it? It's under the nerds. Oh. Metal. Very metal. Well, I did have the, that's just my fault for eating my lunch. Well, yesterday's lunch, technically. Getting a nice, clean 1142. 5x4. Definitely moving. 286, yeah, almost 300. Yeah. Getting 5.11, and that would be 7.07. Oops, did I make it? Okay, so this is, let me just double check my math. 
So yeah, so this is about 3,600. So this is actually less than the... Uh, again, those other were 42 inch, and this is 36. Yeah. So just for comparison's sake, if this were a 42 inch fan, then the CFM would be uh, about 5,000, which would be more. Right. But honestly, it's not as big of a difference as you would think, given that this does seem to be... Like, I feel it on the, bounced off the floor over yeah. here, which I, didn't, I don't know if I did with the 42s we did earlier. So, okay, well, let's let it spin down. And then we'll do a reverse on this one, too, since it's got the reverse. Oh, it's only two speeds. Kind of I like the little hunter sticker there. They didn't want to stamp it into the metal, but they just put a little sticker on there instead. I feel like some of them have a met, have a riveted on. Do they? But I could be wrong. I I don't know if I've seen that. But Yours has the sticker? Mine's a sticker as well. In fact, my sticker was starting to come off, so I had to tape it back down, but... I think have you have we seen any other thirty sixes with Kane before? Because I think in pictures, yes. I've well in person when I lived in the East Coast, I don't own a thirty six with Kane. Okay, but you've seen them. It was just like the other hunters where you could buy the Kane as an after as an add on, you know. Right, right. Okay. Interesting how much it was buzzing. That's not because it wasn't buzz. You'll notice it wasn't buzzing when it was. It's not buzzing when it's running. Right. It's just, just I wonder if the switch was failing in such a way that both coils were energizing kind of instead of each other. Maybe to lock up. Point three eight amps again. Thirty. Yeah, I think it's gonna be the same. Well, you know what. Solid. Yeah. I don't. I don't really see any difference in speed. I think it's about the same. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. These are good runners. I really liked having the little small one at uh, twelve links. Yeah. I wonder if that got used. <laughs> Did you get it back or is that? Yeah. One? Oh, okay. Good. It's upstairs somewhere. That one I believe I converted to three speed and I made it. It had a Jonas low because I was still in the Jonas Jonas lows back then. Atmospheric low. All right. Well. Um, I think it's gonna start. I'll give it two. I'll say three. All right. It's been a while since I've tested one, so I'm just guessing. One, two, three. Yeah, pretty solid three. Interesting the switch housing yellowed a lot more than the canopy did in this case. Probably it was more in the sun. More in the sun, yeah. Okay, here's four. You know what else? So four is a nice atmosphere flow. Jonas. You know what's sad is we haven't had any metal Jonas today. You never know when metal no, Jonas will show up. He's not here. It's hard to predict. It's five. a nice surprise at the end of every video. What? This is five. That's more of a normal low. Funny thing is the uh, so the three speed setup on mine the the low is still really pretty fast. Like it almost kind of looks like it's. I wouldn't say it was the same as the low on this. It was a little bit slower. I think the medium is about the same as the low on this and the high. Does yours have two capacitors, or how does it? How I, does that it I don't know. I have, I, have to, I have to open it up and look. I think it is. I think it is. A, I think it's a capacitor with two values. I honestly don't remember. It's been a long remember. time since I've. I mean, I may mine may go up in the storage unit. Actually, I was thinking about putting that up instead of the um, bath and dressing room. It's not the worst idea. All right. Well, here's seven. I think I hear something off in the distance. And eight. Nine. Yeah, it's funny, like by, by the standards back in the early eighties, I mean at least compared to originals, this was kind of a cheapo, but like you look at it compared to stuff now, it's really a good fan. Yeah, I mean I think there's a there's there's a there's a certain subsect of people, even today, if you get people that are old enough to remember that think if a fan isn't cast iron and doesn't take oil, then it's not good quality. Yeah. 
Because, you know, those those guys that still shop for originals on eBay for that reason. They're not collectors. They just, you know. Right. They, they want a classic want... American car. Right. Which, I mean, it's a solid choice, but it just doesn't mean it's the only good fan. Yeah, I remember running it's into coming. people in the 90s that thought the 90s originals were shit. They wanted the 70s R&M ones. <laughs> in <laughs> hindsight, there's... Kind of funny how that played out. Yeah. I mean, the 70s and 80s R&M, or the, we should just say the two-speed ones, really. Yeah. Because they were all R&M. Um, the two-speed ones were, were good, but I, I, I would argue the PSC was better. Yeah, well, the, th- the thing about the two-speed ones is that they are very hit and miss. Some are quiet and very powerful. Some are loud and slow, and or anything in between. It's yeah, just, you're all over. This is this is eleven and twelve. Is it like four nine and high? Yeah, I think I was Here's exactly what it was. There's thirteen. This is fourteen. Yeah. Get some fly tape. Or a vintage bug zapper, actually. That, well, we talked about that. Pete yeah. and I talked about that. We were, I, 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 In my mind, I thought Mercury ones existed, and I was going to have you find us a Mercury one. In hindsight, I, I think the preheat fluorescent is what I'm thinking of. Preheat fluorescent is probably the coolest one. But yeah, see if you can find this one. Yeah. Here's 17. Right there. Here's 18. 19. Because, yeah, last time we were here, I mean, the mosquitoes kept trying to eat Pete. They really liked him. 20, crunch, crunch, crunch. I feel like it's going to be yet another one that kind of just creeps up toward the... Yeah, so four nights. I was right on at 21. There's 22. 23, 24, 25. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. It's a day of nothing going on. Okay, so a day of, in theory, like, good quality fans, I suppose. I mean, yes and no, because it seems like there's some quality fans that have resonant frequencies, yeah, although right, I do right. have this theory that it's if there's no resonant frequency, there's a better chance of it, you know. Yeah, no, like, I mean, original set of resonant frequency. Well, old ones do, at least. Yeah. Those aren't bad. Okay, um, solid state. Hmm. I, I'll give it bedroom quiet. I'm going to chance it with silent. Things have been real quiet today. It has today. been doing well so far. I think you got this one. It's not silent, but it's damn quiet. It's got a little buzz, but it's not bad. Low on the bedroom easily. Yeah, I agree. We've had a lot of that today. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if it's like the power coming into the whatever facility we're working in is just like it's having a good day because it really does seem like it. It's just less choppy waveform or something. Yeah. I don't know how that's possible, but it definitely gives that impression sometimes. Got a lot of consistency today. Yeah, it's helped having the Variac. I would have never yeah. thought to have used that on a daily test basis. I thought we would just use that for the CF twenty eight and then put it back into my my testing. It does help with you know making sure the voltage. It has. It's been very. Smooth. It's been very useful. So okay, and rush. Uh, I'm gonna say small and rush. I guess I'll say big. I don't think it's gonna be no. So it is big. Oh yeah. If it yeah. goes down to four nine, right? Four nine, I believe. Yeah. Well, it's staying at point five actually, but it might just be teetering on four nine. Yeah. But we saw five two, right? So that's still big. Well, that would be that would be small. That'd be the top end of small. Yeah, it's not going down, so I guess it actually might be small. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well. And well, you know what? Crunch, crunch, crunch. It's been a lot of. It's been a relatively crunch-free evening as well. Yeah, I do. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I enjoy <laughs> the lack of crunching. Well, um, do a, what do we got left? Uh, we did zero to high. Yeah, we just, so we just got Rick test. So just pretty much Rick test. Yeah, I uh, I really love these things. It, it's it's weird because it's one of those fans that doesn't have any childhood significance whatsoever. Didn't even know these existed until getting into fans. But I really like them, especially the 36. They're just, they're cool looking. So this is avocado plant uh, yeah, solidly. Avocado I mean, I'm, I assumed it was because you have one in your house. That's well, a pretty I, good I sign. Mean, there's, there's 
a myriad of fans I could have picked to, to test, and that was one that stood out. So that's so something too. By the way, and this is neither here nor there. Nia and I used to argue because she she's very much a traditionalist when it comes to grammar, and traditionally you don't say a myriad, you say myriad. Um, and uh, now, if you look it up, it is now correct to do either or. But it used to be that, that that a myriad was in. You know how like language evolves, and yeah, sometimes so, things change. Yeah. yeah. So now, so that's that's been an argument. Cause now, but I, but even then, I try. I, I now try not to say a myriad, even though it is now correct because because uh, I got yelled at. So, um, but I'm actually also happy that you know that word because that's not a word that everybody uses. Yeah. Okay. Well, but but anyway, yeah. This yes. no. I, I love these things. I have. I love my antique brass one. They, they never upset to see them. So. Yep. Um, yeah, easily, uh, I was going to say avocado plants, that's not mine, Menards for me. Uh, Yeah, this is the kind of fan, if I have the opportunity to buy one, I will buy it. I don't, you know, I don't care if I already have it or not. It doesn't seem like they pop up in Chicago a whole lot. No. Except that one that I got, otherwise I don't know if I've seen one since getting into collecting. I... At least the 36. I don't think I've seen one for sale in the Midwest. Well, not Wisconsin or Illinois, and you know, I've, I've... Michigan has them. Yeah, Michigan Michigan's has, got a lot of cool stuff. Michigan's got a lot of stuff yeah. that, yeah, that Michigan, that other states Missouri, don't have. Kentucky, like as far as some of those states get so much cool stuff. Yeah, most of these went on that because they these were originally a dance fan city uh, exclusive. Really? Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. That was something that was that dance fan city asked Hunter for a, for a, a, a budget, cheaper model, budget, yeah, budget model, and this is what they came up with. And but then of them, the other stores started to carry them. Hmm. Um, yeah, no, I like these a lot. This is definitely top end for me. Are these metal? I would think a little. Bit. I would think so. Cause, oh yeah, of course they are. Cause Farm and Fleet. Oh duh. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah, I, I, they metal. they probably beat Campbell Corpse given Farm and Fleet. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So forgot about that. Okay, well, time to wrap up the video. And uh, yeah, I wonder how, I wonder how Andy, does Andy like these things? Yeah, cause Farm and Fleet. Uh, yeah, yeah, so pretty much anybody in the Midwest is going to be... Uh, if, at least if you grew up where a farm and fleet is. Yeah. Not everybody grew up a farm and fleet. Some of us grew up with fleet farm. Right. Actually, we didn't have many farm and fleets in, like, the greater Chicago area, per se, but... Uh, at least where I... But, anyway, so... This video is brought to you by the following sponsors. Sandstick. Lightstick. Taco Burrito Mexico. Sperry, the beverage of fan collectors. The Good Manufacturing Company. 81220 LLC, where our motto is crunch, 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 crunch. RickOrSheep.com, a fun game you can play with your friends. For more information, go to RickOrSheep.com. Power Vacuum, the vacuum with more vacuums. Udong Batteries, when I think of batteries, I think of you, Dong, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by the annual financial support from viewers like you. And of course, Patreon.com slash D Spiffy. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's always, we might even make some content for Patreon coming up this week. We've talked about some projects for this week, and I think there would probably be some behind the scenes from that, as well as maybe some public content. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anything else you want to say, Rick? I say they should buy fans. I think they should buy fans. Thanks for watching.